Crucial to how you use your smartphone in this age of data harvesting is taking advantage of features like Android's now robust permissions architecture. And I'm gonna detail that next on Hands on Android. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. Hello, everybody. You've come to the right place. Job well done. Welcome to Hands on Android. I'm your host, Jason Howell, here to shed some light on an important set of controls on your Android device, particularly because every day, I feel like I'm reading a new story about how this app is harvesting user data, or that app is tracking people's location without them knowing, or that flashlight app has access to people's contacts lists for who knows what reason. It helps to take a step back, look at the app in question, and ask yourself, is there a good reason for that app to have that kind of access? And if not, then you can choose to revoke that access yourself. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. It's time to take a closer look at permissions on Android as of Android 10, which is the latest official and widely available version of Android to date. If you want to learn about what we know about the next version, that's Android 11, you'll want to check out episode two of Hands on Android that published last week. Okay, let's take a look. So this is Android 10. Permissions controls do change with every version of the OS, so that's important to keep in mind. This is the Pixel 4 XL that I have, so I'm going to go ahead and go into settings here, and we'll go into privacy and then Permission Manager. Now what you're gonna see here is a list of all the different types of permissions that apps on my device can request access to. And there's a number of them. You can see there's a lot of potentially uh, important and valuable data that could be passed through these permissions. Contacts is actually the perfect example of this. So I'll go ahead and tap into there. And you'll see up in the top here, all of the apps that I have installed that I have said yes, share my contacts information with these apps, and then below that, apps that I have denied that access to. So this is where critical thinking really comes in. When you take a look in your contacts permission, like I am right now, and I take a look at all those apps and I go, okay, wait a minute, AZ Screen Recorder is listed there. Why do I need to be sharing my contacts list with AZ Screen Recorder? I love it as a screen recording app, but I don't feel like it really needs my contacts. I can't think of any reason why. So if I tap on that, I can go right into AZ Screen Recorder within contacts permission and deny that permission. So no longer does that app have that kind of access. That makes me feel a little bit better about it. Even further, I can tap this down here to see all of AZ Screen Recorder's permissions, and I can see at a glance all of the permissions that have been allowed for it, as well as denied. These all make sense. Camera, microphone, storage, that's all part of you know, taking a screen recording and maybe doing some sort of a, a walkthrough with that tool. Contacts, not so much. So I'm happy that I made that choice. So definitely take some time, go back into that long list of permissions and really kind of jump in, you know, location is another good one to kind of take a look at, see which apps are having you know, access to your location data, SMS, they're all really valuable and worth taking the time to look at. Although be careful, because in some cases you can revoke a permission that is actually crucial to how an app operates and you'll wonder why it's no longer working the way you expect it to. So really be vigilant as far as which ones you revoke and accept and all that stuff. Now that's not the only permissions section to take a look at. I'm gonna go out to my main settings page here. And if you go settings and then apps and notifications and then advanced and down here at the bottom, special app access. Only two apps in my case uh, can use unrestricted data. So that's good to know. But as you can see here, here's a list of other uh, permissions. These are maybe less data specific. These are probably more about how your phone operates. So for example, are the apps you know, optimized for your battery? Notification access is actually a really good example. If I tap into here, I can see a number of different apps that are receiving my notification flow. So if a notification comes in, it gets passed through to these apps. And I can look here and be like, okay, Android Auto, that makes a whole lot of sense. If I have my phone mounted in my car and I'm driving and I actually want those notifications to appear in the Android Auto uh, interface, I need that to be accepted, granted. Or if I don't, 
I could always revoke it, and then I won't be bothered by my notifications in the car anymore. Uh, Pixel stand is another use of that. It's a hardware stand that I dock my phone in at night. Do I want my notifications to appear there? All these things that I can ask myself to kind of tailor my experience on my phone so that unnecessary things aren't happening outside of what I really am looking for uh, through my phone. Uh, picture in picture, another great example. Uh, certain apps like Duo, and then you've got YouTube, different apps that have the ability to pop a picture on top of everything that I'm doing. Different apps will require that, or, or ask for it anyways, and you can decide. The power is in your hands, but again, just be sure that you're not revoking access to something that's mission critical for a particular app so you aren't scratching your head wondering why it's not working later on. One final one that I will point out to you is actually device admin apps. This is a really important one because this permission actually gives an app a heck of a lot of power. For example, Google's Find My Device app. I love this, this is how I can find my device if I happen to lose it, but if this is active, then I can actually lock and erase my lost device remotely. And that's a power that I would not grant to most apps on my phone. I trust Google with this, so I have that uh, allowed on my device, and that gives me and that app a lot of power down the line. And finally, a really important permission is location. Do you want apps to have access to whatever your location happens to be at any time? You probably want to button that down a little bit. And thankfully, it's pretty easy to do in Android 10. So we've got settings. We'll go into locations. Here you have just a display of all of the apps that are requesting your location uh, permissions. I'm going to go ahead and pull this down and jump right into maps to give you one sense of the location changes that have happened here uh, with Android 10. It used to be that all you had was allow all the time. So this app has access to my location all the time, be it background or foreground, or deny it. Well, with Android 10, they added allow only while using the app, which means anytime I actively open the app, it can have that location data. But when I'm not using it, that's, that is cut off. And I actually appreciate that a lot of apps that I have on my phone. So that's good to know. As I mentioned last week on the show, there is a new location feature coming to Android 11, which is to allow that permission for just that one launch of the app. And that's a pretty handy feature as well, but that's not quite there yet in Android 10 anyways. So this is as good as it gets. So I know it might seem like a lot of work to do this, but this is your data that we're talking about here. So take a moment, check this stuff out. It's worth your time. And that's it for this episode. Send me your questions if you have them. I'll do my best to answer them for you on the show at some point. That's handsonandroid at twit.tv. That's the place to send your questions. And then new episodes are published every Thursday. And you won't miss any of them if you just subscribe. Head to twit.tv slash HOA for all the ways to do that, including a link to the YouTube channel where you can subscribe there as well. All right, we'll see you next time on Hands on Android.